Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, PO Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036359, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Our Father, we are grateful to you for another day. We thank you for the care in your heart for our generation. We thank you for what your spirit is set to do, even in the time in which we now are. We recognize that, yes, the battle is becoming fierce, and it's the battle for the young. <clears throat> we can see the enemy doing all things to make our young people a prey, setting them up for plunder. And you see there's a collaboration, a confederacy, and a conspiracy with the kingdom of darkness to slaughter our young people and to so endanger them. Manufacturers of hard drugs, the people that are taking business into pornography because they think it's the best way to do their advertisement, and all this, the television houses and all the different sites that have compromised and they have conspired against the purpose of God and against the destiny of the youth. This morning, Lord, we lifted up our voice and we're still lifting it up. The Lord, you will raise a help for us. You will come to the rescue of the young. You will, you will lift up, oh God, a banner over the youth of the nations, all over the nations of the earth. There's nowhere that young people have not been so ensnared. We ask, oh God, this morning, rise up for us in the name of Jesus. And the promise you gave us that we will see, we will see the devil fall like lightning. Lord, we will see him brought down in the name of Jesus. All his kings shall be scattered and we shall see the Lord enthroned mm. over the heart of young people in the coming days. Now, Lord, we are back here. We ask that you will speak to us again. You will give us direction on what to do, mm. and you will please guide us with your spirit. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Now, please return to the passage, our theme passage, that we have been working on. To our first Chronicles 28, we are trusting God that gradually is moving us to where we are getting to. But that verse at chapter 28, we started tracing some few things that are necessary, necessary, prerequisite, a knowledge of God for your strength to be able to do what God is calling you to do. The truth of the matter is that only those who do know their God shall be strong and they are the ones that will do exploit. They are the ones that will do great exploits. And since God is saying be strong and do it, we are still at that point of be strong before we begin to look at what to do and how to do it. So for this morning still, as the Lord will permit us, we are going to be looking at be strong, be strong to do the exploits for which God is setting you up. But as part of what will make you strong is what we are looking at now. So please, can you turn your Bibles to 1 Chronicles 28 and verse 9. As for you, my son, know the God of your father. Know the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart 
and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intents of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. Be strong and do it. Now, before we get to the point of to do it, which is where we are going to conclude this meeting by the grace of God, we are looking at be strong. Be strong because they that do know their God, they are the ones that are strong. They are the ones that can do great exploits. Now, the first thing that I want you to look at, he said, know the God of your father. Know the God of your father. So our first uh, uh, step on to being strong for our assignment in life is knowing God, knowing the God of our Father. And what are we going to do about that? The first thing that I want to quickly deal with is what is it? What does it mean to know? What does it mean to know the God of your Father? What is the, what's the implication of that word, know God? Know the God of your father. What does it mean to knowing God? That's the first word that we're going to look at very deliberately right now. Now, I want you to put your hand where we are. And let's go to John chapter 17, where the Lord Jesus again was talking to his disciples. This is the final time he was also commissioning them. He was also telling them, that as the Father sent him, so he is sending them. They are also at the point of a baptism change. Jesus was about to lay the baptism on their lives, and this was the final time he was praying for them. And look at what he said also in John chapter 17. I want us to quickly go to John 17, and we are going to read verse 3. John 17, verse 3. This is, this is Jesus. Talk, maybe I should read verse 1, 2, and 3, but then I will want us to study verse 3 uh, from the Amplified Version. Let me read it first. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son also may glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is life eternal, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Now you know the first point uh, David was telling uh, Solomon, as for you Solomon, know the God, of your father. And I said, what does that mean? And we're seeing Jesus now defining it for us. He said, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God. So when he said, knowing the God, the God of your father, we are saying to know the only true God. And there's no how you say you are knowing the only true God and you are not knowing Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. So which means to know God, to know God is actually to know Jesus Christ, to become acquainted with Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. Now, I want you to please come with me as we turn to the Amplified Version. We are looking at knowing, knowing. So turn to Amplified Version for that, and let's read verse 3 together. The Amplified Version, and I'll read verse 3. It says, and this is eternal life. It means to know. And all of you, uh, if you have your pen and pencil or whatever, take note of the words that is representing the word to know. It means to know, that is, 
to perceive, to recognize, to become acquainted with, and to understand you, the only true and real God, and likewise to know him, Jesus, as the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, whom you have sent. Let's, let's read that verse again. This is eternal life. Again, it's very touching to me that Jesus was very, very deliberate and very definite. This is eternal life. You can't claim to have eternal life and you have not come to an experience, a growing experience of knowing Jesus and knowing the Lord. You can't say you are going anywhere. I said yesterday, I said, any man who is not in Christ, there is no strength in his life to do anything for God. He is actually in crisis. You cannot commit, cannot commit any assignment to a slave, a captive, who is bound hand and foot, eh? and who is being teleguided by the prince of darkness. You can't send a captive to go and confront his captain. It's not possible. So the first thing that is very critical that we are raising this morning is the fact that this is eternal life. It means to know God, to know the true and the real God. It means to know. And what does it mean to know? To perceive, to recognize, to become acquainted with God and to understand him, the only true and real God. That's the God of our Father. And likewise, that is in the same way, in the same dimension, in the same breath, oh, to know him, Jesus, the anointed one, the Messiah, whom God has sent. It is in the same manner. So you cannot say, when people are saying, I know God, but I don't know Jesus. They are joking. Mm. If anybody says, well, I follow God. I follow God. I don't believe in this your Jesus. He's joking because no one can know God except by Jesus. No one can come to God except by him. So I'm the way, I'm the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. And this is not about denomination. This is not about religion. This is not about anything. It's about life. You cannot know God. You cannot experience God. You cannot become acquainted with God. You cannot understand God. You cannot perceive. You cannot recognize. You cannot become acquainted with the only true and real God unless you come by the way of knowing Jesus. So, the first assignment that is coming to Solomon, in order for him to be strong and fulfill this chosen, I mean, this assignment for which he had been chosen, is for him to seek to know the God of his father. And to know God, we say it means to perceive, to recognize, to become acquainted with, and to understand the only true and real God, and in the same manner, and in the same breath, and likewise, to know him, Jesus, whom the Father has sent. Now, if you go away quickly from there, I will take you back still to that First Chronicles chapter 28, but let's pick it from the Amplified Version. You will see how, even in First Chronicles, it had been expressed. Let's check it again. First Chronicles 28. And I'm reading the Amplified Version now. It says, As are you, Solomon, my son, know the God of your father. And what does that mean? Have personal knowledge of him. Have personal knowledge of him. No general knowledge. Not a, a company knowledge. Knowledge that is personal. Personal knowledge of him. Imagine David telling his son, say, my son, 
As for you, Solomon, know the God of your father. Have personal knowledge of him. Be acquainted with him. What does it mean to become acquainted with him? Be familiar. Then become intimate. Get to know him intimately. Get familiar with him. When you say you are acquainted, for example, some of you that have been uh, following us over the years, I know sometimes you may not even you may not even see my face, but when you heard our voice, maybe in a in, in a in a message or in a text, ah, no, I know I'm really speaking because you are acquainted with our voice. You have listened to this thing over and over and over again, so you know. So when he said, have personal knowledge of him, be acquainted with him, and understand him. Look at that. Look at that, all of you, please. He said, and you, Solomon, my son, know the God of your father. Have personal knowledge of him. Have personal knowledge of him. Be acquainted, be acquainted with him. Become more and more familiar with him, with his voice, with his ways of doing things. You can imagine that that means that God is calling you into a deliberate pursuit of God. If you are going to honestly affect your generation, and there is going to be power to confront the paths of darkness, it will only emanate from your own growing, mm. continuous, progressive, functional, personal, and peculiar, and applicable knowledge of Him. You are getting more and more acquainted with God. You are beginning to learn Him more and more, more and more. You are spending time with Him in order to get to know Him and understand Him appreciate, heed, and cherish him. Can you imagine this kind of instruction that David was putting across to Solomon? Now you see, as I was looking at that, I saw that this brother David was not saying to Solomon what he himself has not done. He wasn't telling Solomon to do what is alien to his own life. Now all of you please, Let's go quickly to explore the life of David in his own Psalms. I just want us to just check his Psalms and then we will run away because there's no time. Even if we sit down and say, let's just study about knowing God, exploring God. Uh, we'll be here for a long time. Of course, I'm going to recommend to you some materials that can help you you know, there is a, a book that we have written some time ago, Encountering God, uh, en God. Exploring God, and Engaging God. So, Encountering, Exploring, and Engaging God. I would like you to please take that material. As you, I want you to read it now that you are young. I want you to begin to do that now that you are young. Uh, not when you become old. I know when you are getting old, you will still need to know him. You will still need to pursue God. I'm still pursuing God and I will keep pursuing him until he calls me home. But as a young person, as someone who has a lot to do ahead of you, as one who is longing that my life will count in this generation, as one wants to make a very deliberate, I mean, indelible mark in the kingdom of God and in this world in which you are living, you need to invest in knowing God. So when this brother David said to Solomon, his son, and he said, and you, Solomon, my son, know the God of your father, that is, have personal knowledge of him, Oh, that's the first thing. I, I said I want to explore uh, the life of uh, David quickly. Let me quickly do that before I return here because this passage itself 
is very, very strong for us to talk about. Now, can you quickly look at Psalm 42? Look at Psalm 42 and look at what this man is saying about his own life. Psalm 42, he said, As a heart panted after the water brooks, so panted my heart after you, O God. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night. Why they continually say to me, where is your God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God. With a voice of, of joy and praise. With a multitude that kept holiday. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquieted in me? Hope down in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Now, that's a man who said, as the deer panted for the water brooks. I know you know that song. Mm. You know, as the deer panted for so my soul longed after you. I know you know the song. But the matter is that here is the way the heart of David panted after God. This man is waking up, is running, is running, seeking God all the time. Say, my soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? That was his passion. That was his preoccupation. That is what he woke up doing. That's what he slept doing everywhere. You wonder why God now knew him as a man after his own heart. Now, in chapter 27, Psalm 27, all of you, please go to 27. You can have all the Psalms and be reading. You'll be surprised. If you go to Psalm 119, it's something else that I wish you would take time to study. Say, the Lord is my light, chapter 27, verse 1, and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So when we say be strong and do it, be strong and do it, what will be the strength of your life? David discovered, he said, the Lord is the strength of my life. If it's not the Lord, I'm a weakling. If it's not the Lord, I'm like a banana. If it's not the Lord, I cannot lift a finger. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. But what is that thing in which you will be confident? One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies. Round about me thereof. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Now, that means when a man invests in seeking to know God, in seeking to be acquainted with God, in seeking to learn to know Him personally, what happens is that the strength of your life will be the strength that the Lord Himself is releasing in you. So when we say be strong, be strong and do it, actually, Brother David was just telling his son, my son, when I ask you to be strong and do what God is telling you to do, your strength can only be the Lord himself. Your strength can only come as you get to know him better and better. As you get to become more acquainted with God. So we saw that this was what this brother is doing. 
You can see, say, my heart is panting after you. Here he say, only one thing have I desire of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in his house. So, you know, here's a man that has battles to fight. He's going to fight Philistines. He's going to fight giants. Well, he said, that's not my concern. That's not what I'm concerned about. Though an horse shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though a horse shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. What will I concern myself with? Only one thing have I desire of the Lord. That will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in this temple. How will you be doing that and you will still be winning your battles? How will you be doing that and you will still be advancing your research? How will you be doing that and you will still be on top in your professional career calling? This is what these men have discovered. And I want to say to you again, from the testimony we had yesterday from our Professor Adiku, and the testimony we have with Sister Shola, and the testimony we are getting from Brother Scott, and the testimony we are getting even as we went through our study, you will discover that, yes, when you seek the Lord, when you seek to know God, when you seek to be acquainted with God, so many revelations, so many uh, insights into research, into science, into anything will come your way. Look at her sister and said, because I had just want to study God, and God was just showing her all kinds of patterns, all kinds of designs, and all these designs that they are ageless, they are timeless. They win, they win all over the world. And she's been carrying up and down and the people are using her styles, her patterns. And where did she get it? She got it in seeking to know the Lord. I just want to underscore that. That when a man decides to seek to know the Lord, may I say to you, you are not wasting your time at all. You are not wasting your time. It is there your mind will become sharpened. Look at what a brother Scott said. He said because of the way he, he lived, because of the wrong choices he made, his mind was destroyed. His brain, his brain cells were, were dislodged. He said so he began to pray to seek to know him. The more he was seeking to know God, the more his mind is being reconstructed, the more his brain cells are being released, the more his intelligence is coming back, and the more his capacity is being released. Those who do know their God, they shall be strong. Some of you don't know that when you give attention to seeking to know him, seeking to be acquainted with him, seeking to become familiar with him, and learning to appreciate and to cherish God and cherish his wisdom, you will begin to be on top. This brother said, he will set me, look at it, let me just read that for you before I leave. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his abanaku shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. He will set me up. Your knowledge of God will set you up there. Your knowledge of Jesus will put you on top. Permit me to say to you, are you in research? Are you in research? Are you in science? Are you in economy? Are you in anything? I want to say to you, one key issue that you must take note for you to be strong for all your assignment is to know the God of your father. Is to get to know him. This was what David knew and he could face Goliath. He was not practicing how to kill Goliath. All he knew is for him to learn how to know God. That was what he was doing. He kept singing. He was a psalmist. He was always singing, The Lord is my shepherd. He was creating songs. He said, Oh Lord, when I look to the heavens, who is man that you are mindful of him? Then you see him constructing song. Oh Lord, my God, how excellent is your name. So you can see him. In fact, he learned to use satri, he learned to play his guitar and his uh, violin and all of that. 
to such a point that when the spirit of the devil came to trouble Saul, they went to look for him and all for him just to be singing. And as he would just start tapping his leg and begin to sing, demons were running away. This man carries strength, but that strength is the Lord. This man carries light that darkness cannot comprehend. And this light is the Lord. Now, we are raising young people who will be strong to do exploits. But what is our first, first uh, equipping? It is God himself. It is for you to grow your knowledge of God. Now, if we are just turning your head and you are brilliant, let me tell you, to be brilliant in your head does not make you peculiar. You see so many Muslim guys which are your friends or your classmates, they are very brilliant as well. You can see anybody else can be brilliant. But what makes the difference is that you have something, something supernatural you carry him inside of you that makes you far above all your friends. Because this young man, Daniel, sought to know the Lord. He determined that I'm not going to define myself. He sought to know the Lord. By the time they were testing him, we are told that he was 10 times better, better than all his colleagues. They were excellent. But you see, how did they become excellent? How did they become so strong that he could interpret all kind of reading and writings? He was in Babylon and yet he was controlling Babylon. How did it come about? It was, it was traced to his seeking to know the Lord. So he said, they that do know their God, they shall be strong and they will perform great exploits. So this morning, the first matter that is coming very strongly in our heart is the fact that the Bible is saying, as for you, Solomon, my son, know the God of your father. Have personal knowledge of him. Be acquainted with him and understand him, appreciate he and cherish him. That's the first word. And I saw that for David, he said, early in the morning will you hear my voice, O God. And when you trace him on and on and on, you go to uh, Psalm 63, you go to Psalm 84, you go to Psalm 92, all the Psalms, they were all the cry of a man who wants to know the Lord, mm -hmm. who wants to know the Lord, so that he can do great exploits. Now, let me, let me go away from that. Let me ask you, do you know what is the secret? What is the secret of the great exploits that Moses did in his lifetime? What is the secret of that thing that made Moses' ministry so strong, so effective, that even Pharaoh of Egypt, with all their chariots, could not do anything against him? It was his cry to know the Lord. In Exodus chapter 32 and chapter 33, I want all of you to come there and let's pick that up as I'm just passing. I just want you to know that all the people that became something in the hand of God that shook their own generation and caused this to happen in their day, what they did was that they sought to know the only true God. And here's Jesus Christ himself saying, this is eternal life, that they may know you. They may be acquainted with you. They may have a personal and a functional knowledge of you. This is also what Jesus Christ was saying. And look at Exodus chapter 33 in verse 1. Let's read it. And the Lord said to Moses, Depart and go up hence, thou and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying unto your seed will I give it. And I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites, 
the Amorite, the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. For I will not go, I will not go in the midst of you. For thou art a steep naked people, lest I consume you in the way. And when the people heard these evil tidings, they mourned, and no man did put on his ornament. For the Lord said to Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, You are a stiff necked people. I will come up into the midst of you in a moment and consume you. Therefore, now put all the ornaments from you that I may know what to do unto you. Now, you know the first thing that struck me, which I was going to trace, was it is possible. It is possible for you to have miracles. It is possible for you to see Canaanites driven out, to see the Amorite driven out, to see the Etite, the Perizzite, the Evite, the Jebusite, and all the parasites. You can see all of those being pushed up and down. And yet the Lord is not going with you. So there is a matter here that I was looking at. That we are not just talking about you go and do something. No, we are not just talking about just do something. We are talking about carrying God into battle. Carrying God into your assignment. That, is, that will be the strength of your life. Not even going with an angel. Not even traveling about with an angel of God. As I see so many people, they are emphasizing, oh, an angel, an angel is traveling with me. An angel, what's an angel? So, look at what the word of God was saying here. So, when it was time that God was not saying, oh yeah, move. I wanted to see the prayer of Moses. And I wanted to follow me quickly as we see what God was saying to Moses. I wish you have time to read. It came to pass, verse 9. As Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. And the Lord spoke unto Moses face to face, and as a man speaketh unto his friend, and he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. I want you to mark that. If you are planning to take over from a Moses, you also need to cultivate what was the peculiar thing about Moses. This was what we can see. Now, so we have been talking about discipleship, we have been talking about following, about all of that. But I want you to note that what David was telling Solomon, that this, what has become the strength of my life is my pursuit of God. The Lord is my life. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is the secret of my life. If you are also going to succeed, if you are going to succeed, eh, know the God of your father. Get acquainted with the God of your father. So I saw that Moses has developed such a relationship with God that God was speaking to him mouth to mouth, face to face, as a friend. And whenever Moses went to the tabernacle, the presence of God came down. So they communed, they discussed. And I saw Joshua, a young man, eh, one of those young boys that was going about with uh, 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 Moses, they called him, and, and they said, his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man departed not out of the tabernacle. I'm praying that there will be young people here. Young men who will long to go to where God has taken some of us. Many years ago when I was praying, I said, Lord, use me. Lord, use me. God said, yes, yes, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you, but there's a place where I make my men. There's a place where I, I, I prepare men for their service. Can you build me an altar? Can you, can you create a space where me and you can interact? 
Can you give me a space where I can pour my life on you, rub on you day by day, moment after moment, moment after moment? That's where I make men. I don't make them on the pulpit. I make them in the secret place. What you see in, this, in, the, in the public is only a little, a little manifestation of what I'm doing with them in the secret place. So I saw a young man like this who said, hey, so this is what happens. I'm not leaving this tabernacle. I will stay there with God. And so Moses said to the Lord, it is his discussion that I'm talking about now. Moses said to the Lord, see, thou sayest to me, bring all these people and thou hast not let me know whom thou will send with me. Yeah, thou hast said I know you by name and that thou hast found grace in my sight. Now therefore, if I pray you, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may do what? That I may know you. Look at the scripture there. Now therefore, I pray you, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may do what? I may know thee that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is thy people. So I found that when God said, angels will go with you, Brother Moses said, no, 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 I can't start going with angel. You are not taught. You say I should carry this, but you are not taught. How will I go? How can I go when you are not going with me? Eh? How will I be different? I'm, let, let me read it to you now. The Bible said, and he said, my presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, he was talking to God, look at this discussion. He said, if your presence go not with me, carry us not and up ends. Now, men that did exploit, the only one thing they cannot do without is the presence of God in their lives. The men that God mightily used and he will still use, the greatest weapon of their lives is the presence of God in their lives. So when David was telling Solomon, my son, know the God of your father. Know the God of your father. And we are beginning to see that, that knowing the God of your father, according to that scripture, simply meant, simply meant, have personal knowledge of him, be acquainted with him, understand him, appreciate him, heed and cherish him, and serve him with a blameless heart and a willing mind. I will be coming back on it. These are very important instructions that we have to take this morning, as the Lord will allow me and you. So if I'm going to become useful in the hand of God, if you are going to strike your generation, it's not about running up and down, shouting and putting your photograph on the on the billboard. That's not what will make a change. What will bring a change is a man who carries the presence of God. What will bring a change is that as you are coming, there is an invisible but invincible power of God rested in your life, mm -hmm. resident in your heart that you are brought, you speak one word, but now that invisible but invincible power of God goes to hit the heart of men. They say, we, we, we don't know what is happening to us. As he spoke, my heart was tearing. It's because of the presence that these men have brought. When you lose that, you have lost all. You may be brilliant. I say your being brilliant does not make you peculiar. There are other brilliant people. You may be energetic. There are others who will be more energetic than yourself. And if you are talking about wisdom, Satan has seven heads. You only have one. And you can see that the boys in, in, the, in the vanguard of darkness, they are also very, very wise in their own conceit. But what is it that we dismantle all of that when you come in confrontation to them? Is the presence of God in your life. Mm -hmm. So look at Brother David, I mean, Brother Moses saying, let me go back there, verse 15. He said to him, if thy presence go not with me,
carry us not up ends. For weary shall it be known here that I and your people have found grace in your sight. Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, and I and your people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. What makes you peculiar? What separates you? What makes you different is the presence of God in your life. So my first request this morning, as men and women that God has chosen to do something for him in this generation, those of you that God is preparing to take the baton of leadership, to take the baton of ministry, to go and affect people, to affect different gates, to go to different aspects of life, different aspects of human endeavor, whether you are going to economy, whether you are going to business, whether you are going into, you know, even art, you are going to fashion, you are going to the world of communication, God is sending you to go and take a stand in academics. God is sending you to become a voice in politics. One thing that you cannot do without is his presence. There's nothing you can do when his presence is not with you. Where will we Shall we be different from all the other nations of the earth? What will give us the audacity that we can take over? If the presence of God does not go with us, what will give us that kind of boldness? What weapon do we have? What sophisticated arrangement are you going to start making that can dismiss to all those that have been there for years? But when you carry him, when you are a man of his presence, when you are a man that is acquainted with God, this was the secret in the life of David. Imagine all these people that are well armed in the army of Saul, including Saul himself. They could not do nothing against this Goliath that is shouting at them. But look at a young man who has just come with the presence of God. Look at a man just coming from the presence of God. Oh my God. He was just coming in. And he was asking, what is happening? They said, is this big man, this big Philistines? He said, this is an uncircumcised Philistine. Why is he talking like that? Mm. How did he know that this young man, God is not with him? How did he know that Goliath has nothing? He's an uncircumcised man. And let me go and face him. How did he know? was coming from the presence of God. Then he had picked some five smooth stones from the brooks. And you know, I was wondering, where did he get that? You know what? You know what done on me? Because a few times when we have been, maybe when we went on holiday and I like to walk sometime by the sea, when we have space just to take fresh air and just walk and just do some time of prayer and all of that. Sometimes when you go near the sea, you will see smooth stones that have been washed. Very smooth, very beautiful. Very beautiful stones. So I could imagine that when they said um, uh, five smooth stones that David had picked from the brooks, I was wondering, yes, it could be that while he was meditating, while he was sitting down, he saw some of those stones. Sometimes when I travel like that, I like to carry such stones and come and decorate uh, this house with it. It's just like too heavy to carry on air. Mm. So, but you see, those when he carried those stones and he put in his bag, only for him to face Goliath and they say, Goliath is, he said, no, 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 let me go. And he just carried his small catapult with those small stones and he was ready to go and face. How could you carry ordinary catapult with smooth stone, not even very sharp stone that could pierce somebody's head? How could you carry that and hope to go and face Goliath? No, he wasn't trusting in the stones. He was carrying a supernatural presence of God. Something about David that I'm really praying that we don't know all of is that he is a man who carried a presence. He's a man who carried, he doesn't need Armor. He doesn't need anything. No. He, he, he's wearing an armor. When they wanted to give him the armor of uh, Saul, he said, no, no, I've not tried this before, please. 
remove this armor. Let me go with the armor I know. They say, oh, you are going bare chested. Say, no, 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 I'm not going bare chested. It's because you can't see the armor I'm wearing. These are men that carries the presence of God. And I don't know how to press on you, but I'm praying that hunger will rise in you as it rose in my own heart several years ago. The hunger in my heart years ago and still up till now, that hunger is still there with me. I want to be a man who carries Jesus to a place. I want to carry Jesus. I'm not, I don't, I'm not interested in anything. I don't, there's no need to wear a costume. There's no need to do anything. No need for title. No need for big name. But I want to carry him there. I want to enter into a meeting and suddenly the presence of God just came. I wanted to start preaching and suddenly the presence of God just came. In my mind, I don't always like to finish a message before a divine interruption will come from heaven. That was my cry all the years. I've always cried that, Lord, let me carry you to a meeting and as soon as I'm talking, people will stop seeing me. They will not see me again. They will just see you talking to them. They will just hear you talking to them. They will just say, ah, why is he talking about me? Did you know me before? Why is he pointing at me? And I've seen that happen over and over again from one nation to another. I've seen that. And I know it's going to happen even to you here today because God is faithful. But I need something much more. I need such a life more. And if you are designing to become the, the next person in the purpose of God, you are designing to be used of God, Will you not follow us to where we collect some things? Mm. Eh? Will you not follow or will you not say, Sir, probably whenever I listen to you, something normally happens. I don't know what normally pulls my heart. Hey, can you not follow me to where some things are collected? Or you want to take a congregation that you have no power to sustain? Were you thinking that even if we organize a big meeting and we ask you to come and preach, you can sustain them with your rhetorics? Why are you not interested and say, Oh God, where these men are, where you do something to them, where you reveal your glory into their lives, take me there. I also want to go there. Solomon, my son, know the God of your father. Have personal knowledge of him. Be acquainted with him. And understand him. Appreciate, heed, and cherish him. That is where the power is. So I want to say that when I say be strong and do it. Without missing word. And without beating about the bush. The strength to do God's work is God himself at work in you. The strength to see the exploits, the things that God wants to do in your generation, the things that God wants to do in your academic career, the things you want God to, to do in the midst of your colleagues, it will be the strength of God in your life. And this strength is proportional to your knowledge of Him. It is only those who do know their God that shall be strong. It is those who wait on God that shall renew their strengths. It is only those who stand constantly in the presence of God that something will roll up on them, that something will settle on their lives. That the presence, you know, yesterday I was begging, I said, Lord, let your strong hand be upon me. I have known that hand all my years. And I say, Lord, I don't just want to know it as a sentiment. I want to know it real. I want to be a man under the hand of God. I want to go, you know, knowing that they are carrying something. I'm carrying something. I'm carrying God. I'm carrying his presence. I'm carrying his presence. I'm carrying his presence. I've read about old men of God, men like Jasmine, Men like uh, uh, E.M. Bands who carry literally the presence of God to places. 
and people cannot resist that presence. People that came to fight them, people that came to argue with them, they didn't know how they started melting because they saw something that they did not think they would see. They thought they were coming to fight uh, Chasmini, only for them to enter into the meeting and they started seeing something else and they were melting one by one because the presence of God. And I said, Lord, is that only peculiar to such men? God said, no. You who seek me will find me. And that's the next word. But before I go to that next word, because you can see it in that verse 9, it said, if you seek him, inquiring for and of him and requiring him as your first and vital necessity, you will find him. You will find him. Can I read that again? Mm -hmm. And you, Solomon, my son, know the God of your father. Have personal knowledge of him. Be acquainted with him. Understand him. Appreciate him. Heed him. Cherish him and serve him with a blameless heart and a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and minds and understands all the wanderings of the thoughts. If you seek him, and what does it mean to seek him? If you seek him, inquire for him, as we read in that chapter 27, he said, One thing have I desire that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, that I may inquire of him. So you see, when we talk about knowing God, you don't know God when you are not asking for him. Mm -hmm. You can't encounter God when you are not seeking, say, sir, sir, I just want to know you. I want, let's discuss. Who are you, oh God? Who are you, oh God? You see, that's what we do the miracle. If you seek him, inquiring for him, inquiring, oh my God, oh my God. And of him, they are asking, you are inquiring of him, and you are inquiring for him, and you are requiring him. Look at three words that they have used here. If you seek him, that is, inquiring for, and inquiring of, and requiring, requiring. The word requiring comes from request. I mean, requiring as a prerequisite for your life. Requiring him. As your first and vital necessity. Some of you may think it's money you need. No! Some of you think you need a, a connection. No! I can see some of you thinking that what will make you succeed is to have public address system. No! 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 That is not a prerequisite. That is not a required thing. It's not, it's not required. What is required is him as your first and vital necessity. When your heart now knows that, ah, so what I need in my life is God. What I need in my life is this Jesus. I need him. I need you, everyone. When that song becomes your song daily, I need you, oh, I need you, every hour. I need you, oh, touch me now, my Savior. I come to thee. When you require him as a vital, you know when you use the word vital, when you go to hospitals and they are saying, we are taking your vital signs. They are talking about those basic elements that make life possible. They are the vital sign. So when it is clear to you that you <laughs> you're requiring Jesus, you're knowing Jesus is vital. It's vital. It, it, it is a component for living. When that is no more in your life, you are dead. Eh? Vital. And as a, as your first and vital necessity, when that happens, you will find him, my brother. You will find him. 
You who seek him will find him. If as we are finishing this morning, you decide, say, hey, God, I have found what I need to look for in my life. I have found what I'm going to preoccupy myself with. Even if war encamp against me, even if a war surrounds me, it will no longer be a matter. And I won't be chasing horse up and down. I won't be chasing a uh, battle here and there. I won't be chasing my colleague here and there. I will bury my head. Because if I can get God, I'll get anywhere else. If I can get your presence, when I go to make a presentation in that academic conference, men will be baffled. And look at what uh, Professor Adiku was saying yesterday. Look at how he was going, meditating, just meditating and praying, and God was showing him something. And so you see them walking on the ground. And this is raw meat movie. Eh? Why are they not rotting? Why are they? And then God began to remind him all the kind of things that you could research. In. He came back to do some research. You'll be wondering, how can a man like this be getting those kind of things that baffle the whole world? Before you know it, he is being nominated, he's winning award, and all of those things all over Africa, all over the world. Because of his knowledge of Jesus. When he said at 35 he was already a professor, some of you just opened your mouth, wow! Because I look like a big feet. And yet I would have seen it so casually. Very casually. Because when you seek the kingdom of God first, when you pursue God first, so I'm challenging all of you listening to me now, I'm challenging those of you that are young in academics. I'm challenging those of you that want to prevail in business. I want to I'm challenge. Look at what that sister said yesterday. I just enjoyed their testimony as I sat there yesterday. Eh? She said she was praying. And then she had a vision. And saw yellow, yellow, yellow everywhere. Said, ah, what is this yellow all about? What am I going to do with yellow? And then she went to market and just saw some persons. They would just want to sell nothing but bill, bill of yellow, yellow material. And she got all of that at such a cheap rate. And she was still coming back. Lord, what do I do with it? And God said, all the patterns I showed you. Her patterns were not coming from copying people. Her patterns were coming from meditation, from communion with God, the creator of all things. God was introducing himself to her as the creator God and imparting to her the creativity that almighty God can give. How can you beat such a man? How can your business overpower such a business that is being dictated from heaven? I wish I can ask all of you this morning to do nothing more than to rise and say, Lord, draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. If this is where the strength for my expert lies, Lord, get me there. If this is the secret that will make me to accomplish all that you are saying, get me there. Dear brothers and sisters, I'll tell you one personal testimony, just one. There's no time for me to tell you stories. When I had felt God was going to do something with my life, I was asking for power. But God said, no, no, what you need is not power, you need me. Only one thing is needful. I said, how can you say that, oh God? Out of so many things that people need to do the work of God on earth, they are saying only one thing is needful. You know, it jolted me, it jolted me. It made me afraid. I said, God, you mean only one thing, not two, not three, not four, not five. He said, only one thing is needful. When I began to study for that, just described as only one thing. I saw that the, uh, Peter, I mean, uh, Moses said, only one thing. Only one thing, that I may know you. Even when God said, I'm coming, I said, oh, that I may find grace in your sight to know you. And I'm surprised that that wonderful day when the Bible said the Lord decided to come and God kept him in the shadow, in the cleft of the rock. I was thinking that God would be saying many things. No. 
All that God did was that he just proclaimed himself. He just began to describe himself before this brother. I said, ah, so knowing God is the strength of my elders. I said, eh? Hey. Then I went and checked this David that I'm talking about today. Then I went and checked. I went and checked the Lord Jesus himself. I went and checked Paul. And I'm going to read Paul to you before we stop now. And I then realized that that's, their, that's what they are looking for. I said, okay, Lord, if that is it, I also I will look for nothing else. So I then discovered that I don't need publicity. I don't need to change my location. I can be in that casino, that bush where I used to be. I can just be there, just seeking to know him. And God say, yes, yes, you are not wasting your time. If you are preoccupied with seeking to know me, you will see what I'll do with your life. And the rest is the story. You can see what God is doing with my own life. And I've not done anything more than that. I've only been doing one thing, one thing. That's what I've been doing every day. That's what I've been crying about every day. I do not seek people's connection. I don't look for supporters. I'm not asking for anybody to come and support our work. You've never seen me write one newsletter asking for people to support Peace House or to come and support anything. No, 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 no. Only one thing I've been doing. And those of you that want to step into this calling, those of you that God is showing that you have a portion of what God is talking about, this one thing, this one thing. When I felt I needed to share a, some stories with you, I wrote that small book, It Leads Me. I said, It Leads Me is not yet our my biography yet. Even though some people thought, ah, that's already enough. That's not enough, just a very small thing. You might pick it when you find it. And several format of it is coming. You can listen to it. Yet, I just wanted you to know there's one thing. And I, I said, I couldn't finish that story without telling you one thing that is needful. So that one thing that is needful, I have not failed to share with any one of you that want to be anything in the hand of God. Eh? That's what will become the secret for your growth. And if I see any of you seriously seeking that one thing, I can go and sleep. Because you will arrive. But if I see you just running up and down, just copycatting people, trying to preach like others are preaching, and then you are just jumping here and there, you are just wearing a big suit, eh? you spend so much time before the mirror, and not before the mirror of the word of God. Eh? I see you, you have a lot of perfume that is breaking forth around you. Anywhere you go, the whole place is smelling somehow. That's what you are looking for. You don't understand that there's an aroma. Mm. There's an aroma that breaks forth from a man's life when he has spent time before the fire of the word of God. God said to me, when what I'm roasting in your life is getting roasted, the aroma of it will go everywhere. And men will trace you out. You don't need to struggle. They will trace you out. I said, you mean this will go all over the world? Say, yes, why not? You mean I don't have to be uh, connected with big men? No, 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 no. You only need to be connected with God. And a man who is connected with the Almighty God, which other connection does he need in life? I felt, ah, can I be satisfied with that? Can I settle with that? God said, yes, if you want. No man has sought me like that and I've disappointed him. If you seek me, you'll find me. I've never asked anybody to seek me in vain. Can I ask you before I stop? This morning, my heart is just burdened. Burdened as if like David. David was saying, You, my son Solomon, know the God of your father. Have personal knowledge of him. Be acquainted with him. Understand him. Appreciate him and cherish him. And serve him with a blameless heart, a, a focused heart, a loyal heart, and a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and minds and understands all the wanderings of the thought. If you seek him, inquiring for 
and of him and requiring him as your first and vital necessity, you will find him. I don't want to read the last. I say if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. I don't want you to do that. And I'm not gathering you here so that you can forsake him. I'm trusting God that God is gathering you here so that you can seek him. Now, let's go reading more scriptures before we can, we can, we can, we can move out of this. Will you follow me to Jeremiah 29? I want to read verse 12 and verse 13 and verse 14. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with all your heart, and I will be found of you, says the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you again unto the place where I have caused you to be carried away captive. Mm. Now, give that to us in Amplified Bible, and we read that verse 12 and verse 13, and see what God is saying again there. Verse 12 from Amplified Version. Then you will call upon me, and you will come and pray to me, and I will hear, and I will heed you. Verse 13. And then you will seek me. You see, whenever we have used the word seek, you see the next word, inquire for me. Inquire, inquire. Bro, you have not inquired for God. You have not said, God, who are you? You have not said, God, I want to know you more than I've known. I'm not, I'm tired of general talk. I want to know you personally. I want to be acquainted with you. Yes, yes. He said, then you will seek me. You will inquire for me. And you require me as a vital necessity. And you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Now, let me finally ask you to now read the story of Paul. Finally. Because I just want you to know that all the people that did something great for God, all the people that shoot their nations, all the people that established something that we can talk about today, one thing is common to them. One thing was needful in their lives. It is their personal pursuit of God. It's their knowledge of God. Jesus told Martha, 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 you are worried about many things, you are bothered about many things, but only one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that thing, you will not be taken away from her. And you can see that Mary, she did only one thing, always sitting at the feet of the Lord, always seeking to know him, always seeking to hear him. And so when she saw that this Jesus the way he's talking, the way I see him, I may not see him again. No, this is the last. If I'm going to do something, let me anoint him now for his burial. She quickly went and carried the alabaster box and broke it and poured it on Jesus. And then Jesus said, leave her. What she has done shall be spoken on for her as a memorial. Wherever the gospel is preached, can you imagine? You did one thing, only one thing. And for the rest of ages, you will be spoken about. How many times you have done too many things, many things nobody can even remember because it's of no consequence. I'm not seeking to do many things. I just want to do the one thing that is needful as I'm seeking to know him, as I'm seeking to walk with him, I'm speaking to go in his presence. Now go with me to Philippians and let's read the testimony of Brother Paul. Again, just to save my time, I would like you to take it quickly in the Amplified Version so that I can save my time. Uh, because when I read the Amplified Bible, it's become easier. You can just read it. You yourself, you will understand. And then we can go from there. Verse 8. No, let me read from verse 7. Said, the Amplified, verse 7, But whatever former things that I might have been gains to me. I have come. 
I have come to consider them as one combined loss for Christ's sake. Yes, furthermore, I count everything as loss compared to the possession of the priceless privilege, the overwhelming preciousness, the surpassing worth and supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Look at what this brother is saying. That to know Jesus is a priceless privilege. The overwhelming preciousness, the surpassing worth, supreme advantage. You will be saying, this thing that brother is saying, how does that solve my problem? How does that do this? How does that do that? I want to tell you, it's the one thing that is needful if you are going to be strong. So when I say, be strong, be strong, be strong, I tell you, this be strong is not a muscular strength. This be strong is not about hugeness. This be strong is more than self-determination. This be strong is be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in your knowledge of Jesus. If that happens to you, I can bet you you are going far. If that happens to you by the grace of God, we are going to hear of you tomorrow. <coughs> and if there is anything we are saying to you from the depth of our heart, oh, not silver or gold do we have to give you. I don't have gadgets to give you. For many, many years, I have never had any gadgets. No gadgets. Because I've always felt that it's no gadgets. It's no gadgets. Can you imagine you don't have a message, but you have gadgets eh, to carry emptiness. And there are people have gone to, I said they have great gadgets. If their microphone is doing like they just don't too, you just know that they have serious equipment. And I used to go to places where they have serious equipment. But with all their serious equipment, just noise, there's no substance. Mm -hmm. And I told God, don't give me gadgets, give me you. Don't give me money, give me yourself. Don't give me a crowd, give me your presence. Don't give me gold, give me your grace. Those are the kind of prayers I have prayed, and I'm still praying it. Those are the things that I know is very critical for me, if I'm going to become anything. And if you are planning, if the Lord is saying, you, my son Solomon, God has chosen you to build his church, to build his house, to build his kingdom, and to cause the kingdom of darkness to come down, what do we have to offer you? What God has offered us. What God has shown us. In recent times, I found people wanting now to do a kind of research. They want to do a research about our preaching. They want to do a research about, uh, about the work of God that we have done. They want to do research about this. They want to do research about that. Some say, want to research you. Want to research you. I say, have I reached that level where you can research a man like me? What am I that I'm going to research? Is that we have so much to research about you? I say, no. There's only one thing. Just one thing. And that is what I'm pursuing. And that one thing is too small for you to research. They said, no, 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 but that one thing has produced enough for us to talk about. I said, well, if you want to talk about that, but if you want to ask me to tell you one thing, one thing, one thing is needful. Mm -hmm. And all the brothers and sisters that have been around us, you know that there's only one thing that is needful. You know there's no two things, nothing. Not if you came near me now, you know that there's nothing, no sophistication. Nothing, nothing at all. Just one thing. Sometimes you come, you can because we don't even know anything. We don't see anything. Hey, everything is just ordinary. That's true. Everything is ordinary because you are looking for big, big things. You can't see that thing which is invisible, the presence of God. I want to commend that to you this morning. I want to recommend it to you this morning. And I want God to hook your heart. Are you a student still in the, in the lower schools? I 
and the Holy Ghost has brought you into this meeting, you can catch it. You can catch that passion. Even as a young girl, you can catch it. You can catch this spirit that we are talking about this morning. Or are you in the university? You can catch it. Or you have left school. You, have, you are now in business. And God has brought you to this. You can catch that spirit. You can say, Lord, what I heard them talking about, I want it. So let me finish reading what I'm reading. Then you can rise up and pray. He said, of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, and of progressively becoming more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, of perceiving and recognizing and understanding him more fully and more clearly. For his sake I have lost everything and consider all to be mere rubbish, refuse dreads, in order that I may win and gain Christ, the anointed one. And that I may actually be found and known as in him, not having any self-achieved righteousness that can be called my own. Based on my obedience to the Lord's demands, ritualistic uprightness or supposed right standing with God, those are quiet. I'm not talking of religious activity. I'm not looking for ritualistic things, but possessing the genuine righteousness which comes through faith in Christ. The truly standing with God which comes from God by saving faith. Now let's read verse 10, which I will stop with. For my determined purpose is that I may know him. That I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him. This is the only thing Paul was doing that made all his letters, all his epistles, eh? a never finishing resource material. Then I was asking God, I said, Lord, how did you work with this man? They just wrote a letter and for thousands of years people are reading it. How can I be writing books that after two, three years people have forgotten what is in it? God said, it depends on what you are looking for. If you are looking for me, and if it is me that you are carrying about, eh, whatever I say in you and through you, it will also have an everlasting effect. Your messages will not be fading away. You can preach a message and in 30 years, it will still be fresh. It will still be affecting people. I say, oh God, is that possible? Say, yes, if that's what you are looking for. That's what I was looking for. That's what I'm still looking for. That's what I recommend to you this morning. That's what I'm asking you to step into. And even if you are a young fellow, know the God of your father. Know the God that we we, your, your leaders, those that God has raised to guide you, to bring you up in the faith, this is the true God that will follow Jesus himself. If you will know him, if you will pursue him, if you will cry for him, then nobody can predict how far you are going to go. He said, this is my determined purpose, that I may know him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly. And that I may in that same way come to know the power of flowing from his resurrection, which is exact over believers, and that I may so share his sufferings as to be continually transformed in spirit into his likeness and even to his death in the hope that if possible I may attain to the spiritual and moral resurrection that lifts me up, that lifts me out from among the dead, even while in the body. No time to talk about that. I pray that God will help you. In 2 Peter, Peter also spoke about this. Peter also spoke about it. Let's read 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter 1 and verse 2. You know, Peter was writing, he said, May grace, God's favor and peace, which is perfect well being, all necessary good, all spiritual prosperity, and freedom from fears and agitating passions and moral conflict, be multiplied to you. How? In the full, personal, precise, and correct knowledge of God 
and of Jesus Christ our Lord. That's how God will release strength to your life. There are many things that we could have been saying about be strong, be strong, be strong, be strong, but let me reduce it to one thing. Only one thing is needful for you to be strong enough to confront your generation. It is the presence of God in your life. And this presence of God in your life will be on the increasing. It will be ever increasing as you increase in your act. You're requiring him. You're inquiring of him. You're inquiring for him. Seeking him day and night. Eh? More than your necessary food. If you will do that, I trust that God in mercy eh, will reveal himself to you. So wherever you are this morning, we are praying. Even if it's only this morning you have come and say, ah, so is this what they are saying I need to, 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 to have in order to be strong and carry out my assignment in life? And I want to persuade you. I want to persuade you that that's the first thing. That's the one thing. And all those who need that one thing, it won't come to you by chance. No, it won't come to you by chance. Say, Mary has chosen this one thing, and no one will take it away from her. If you don't choose it, it won't come to you. Some of us, we made it a personal choice. I didn't bother about anything else. I know there are things that people are saying, oh, privately, you need this, you need that. I told them, I said, thank you, thank you. I don't need that. What I need is what I'm looking for. What I need is my pursuit. I'm pursuing it day and night. I told God that if anybody pursues you and it can be a waste, let my life be an example. And God said, ah, it can never happen. Nobody ever seeks me in vain. And I'm grateful to God that he has not allowed my life to be a waste. He has not allowed me to be a useless non-entity. I know I don't have things, I don't have money, I don't, but I have him. And that's okay. That's okay. I never even thought I would be able to write car in my life. I just thought, let me just be carrying you about. In fact, you know in my heart, I want to be one of those quartites. Quartites, they don't write cars. They carry Jesus, they carry the ark on their shoulders. I thought that's how I would be going. But God said, no. No, you can still carry me. You can carry my presence. Even if I put you in an aeroplane, you are carrying my presence. And even if I have put you in a, 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 a car and with aircon, that's no problem. And if I put you on a bicycle, no problem. That's not important. The important thing is that you are carrying me there. That's important. That's what I want. I still want that today. Still want that today. I don't know whether you want that. If you do, join me as we pray. I need the every hour. Most gracious Lord, no tender voice like that can pierce a fall. I need the Lord, I need Thee. Even now, I need Thee. Oh. Touch me now, my Savior. I come to you. you stand up if you need Jesus? If you also need him as I do. If you want him as I want him. If your desire is for him. One thing I desire the Lord. And that will I seek after. Are you praying? Say, Lord, I need you this hour. I need you at this point, oh God. I need you by your hand. Do something with me this morning, wherever you are. Wherever you are, all over the earth. Are you in Belize? Are you in Central America? Are you in Bahamas? Eh? Are you in Mexico? Where are you? Are you in the US, in different parts of US? Are you in Canada? Are you in Europe? Are you in Belgium? Are you in Germany? Wherever you are, I think you should stand where you are. If you are also designing this, if your heart is asking and say, Lord, it's you I need, it's you I need, it's you I need, 
I need you more than food. I need you more than money. I don't need gadgets, I need you. If it becomes your possession, there's nothing else you will need in life that you will not get. But it will not come to you by chance. It has to be by choice. I want to ask you to pray right now. The, the altar I'm making this money is a very peculiar one. I'm asking for those who are saying everything else I'll count it as rubbish. Mm. Everything else will no longer matter to me. It will be me and you, Lord. It will be me and you, Lord. Me and you, Lord. Myself and you, O oh God. That's what I'm longing for. The much I've known about you is nothing compared with what I'm here to know of you. Lord, I want you this day. I want you this day. I want to draw me nearer to you and walk me closer with you. I don't know which song you would like to sing that will express that cry of your heart. I don't know how you are going to respond, but I'm only asking this morning for those who are saying, Lord, it's you I want. It's you I want. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I don't need money. I don't need gold. I don't need men. I don't need gadgets. I need you, Lord. I want you, Lord. Do something between me and yourself, Lord. Create in me hunger for you. Cause my spirit to wake up, running after you day by day. I want you, Lord. I want you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Anyhow you want to pray. Anywhere you are standing to pray. But you are saying, Lord, I need you. I need you. Lord, it's you I need. It's you I need. It's you I need. Thank you, Lord Jesus, this morning. Now, but if you don't need Jesus, let's say you need something else. Let me excuse you to please sit down. You can't join some of us that are looking only for him. If you are looking for something else, that something else you are looking for is not here. And there are no common bread here. The what is here is Jesus, if you want him. So let me see you lift up that hand and say, Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Now I need you. Touch me now, my Savior. I come to thee. I need you, oh, I need you, even now I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. Are you there? Is that your desire? Can you lift up your two hands and tell him and say, Lord, Draw me nearer, nearer, bless the Lord, to the cross where thou was died. Draw me nearer, 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 bless the Lord, to the precious bleeding side. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my sister. But I want to take a step. Take that step from where you are saying, Lord, I actually need you. I need you. I need you. It's you I want. You are the one thing I need. Every other thing will fade. I'm a young man, but I need you. I need you. I want you. I know if you are in my life, I will win my battles. I know if you are in my life, I will not be misplaced. I know if you are in my life, I will see great things happen in my generation. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like me to commend you to God? If you will step out before God, I need you, Lord. And I don't know whether you have space to kneel down or whatever you feel like doing to God this morning. I'd like you to stretch forth yourself and say, Lord, others may look for something else, but you I need. 
I will want to love you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my spirit. Lord, I need you. I can't be too old to need you. Even if you are where we go for 30, 40 years, I still need him. Or if you are just starting as a young sister, and your heart is saying, Lord, nothing else. Strange love, take it away from me. Strange affection. No, I want to love you with all my heart today. Let this meeting mark me out as one who has fallen in love with Jesus. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I would like to pray with you. So I want to see your two hands straight to heaven. And you are saying, Lord, it's you I want. It's you, Lord, I want. This is the one thing I have needed. This is the one thing that will become the strength of my life. This is the one thing that will make me finish well. This is the one thing that will become the aroma of my life. This is the one thing that will overwhelm the academics. All those my colleagues, they will see something different in my life. Lord, it's you I need. It's you I need. Lord, thank you. Look at so many of your people everywhere. They are stretching for their hands. They say, I need you. Lord, you said, if we seek you, if we inquire of you, and if we inquire for you, and if we require you as a vital necessity, we will find you. Lord, let us find you. Let us find you in a very definite way today. Let us find you in a very definite experience this morning. Let us find you, oh God. Let us find you. Let these brothers find you. Let this young man find you. Let this student find you. Let this young lady find you, oh God. Let them find you in the name of Jesus. You promised. You promised that we will find you. Lord, let us find you. I just pray this morning, oh God, that everywhere this uh, meeting is running, and all those who are standing in their different centers, and they are no more bothered about anything else, they say, now I have seen what I needed. Mm. I've seen what I have omitted and made me a backward fellow. This day, this morning, oh God, let us find you. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, thank you. 